Any other thoughts before we go on to questions? I will say, I'll touch on it a little bit while we're waiting on um, Kyrie to come back. Um, you know, when you said that, you know, parents think about the now and um, not before, you know, uh, my son came over a couple nights ago and, you know, he's grown and out the house now. And, you know, he was reminding me of stuff that he remembered from when he was little and I was in my early, I had him when I was 19. And so, um, yeah, just he, he remembers certain stuff and he's like, you know, you were me. He's always saying I'm always was harder on him than I was the rest of his siblings. And I'm like, no, I treated y'all all the same. But no, he has told me about some of the ass whoopings that he got that he never forgot. Um, and I mean, they weren't like abuses. It's the stuff that, you know, like he threw a toy at me and he's like, and I remember you picked the toy up and you, you held it in front of my face. And you threw it on the ground. Wow. It was his Mr. As you Pusey should have. Right. right. And I took I my sandal off, off and I wore his little butt out. He was about like, probably about like four, but he, you know, he remembers that stuff. And it was just, you know, it really, I, I don't know. You do kind of forget, but, um, and we were laughing about it. It wasn't like, oh, mom, let's have a coming to God moment. We need to, you know, talk this out and cry because now I need therapy. No, it was just like, he's like, you remember when blah, blah, blah. And I had no memory of it until he said it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I remember, you know. But in his mind, you know, he thought I was in a bad mood and I just whooped him. He didn't realize that he threw a toy, threw at, a me. toy at me. Girl, Jalen was a thrower. Do you that remember boy, that? that? He was, started yeah, throwing stuff at the boy, age of one boy. years old. You were driving in the car one time and he took his sippy cup and, and busted you in the back of your head. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, pull the car over. Me. Pull it over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Karina used to be yelling through the phone. Yelling the I would. Out. Yeah, he was, uh, he, he hit her in the back of the head while she was driving. And she was like, oh my God, I just got hit in the head. And she didn't know what it was. And I'm like, and she was like, I think the baby hit me. I was like, girl, pull that car over. Get with his program right the freak now. Because we gotta stop this spirit. This is this is a this is a spirit. Like you ain't gonna be out here throwing stuff and hitting people in the head. Girl, he was throwing his binkies, he was he threw bottles, anything. He would take his little shoes off and throw. I don't know why that child just but he loved to throw. That was one of Jalen's things. So he threw a toy at me um with incredible aim and it got me like um on my side and I'm like, oh uh uh. So I picked up the toy. That's why I picked it up and showed it to him. Like, look, this is why you're getting your butt whooped because he liked to, you know, play silly sometimes. So anyways, but no, we, we talked about that and then, you know, moving to Portland and then coming back and stuff like that. And there's this stuff that I, whether I blocked it out or whatever it was, you know, I was like, wow, that did happen, you know, but in the moment when I go back over my memories and stuff, I never even thought of. So I was seeing it from his little five-year-old, six-year-old perspective. So that's all. That's all. Um, but no, I really, <clears throat> I appreciated that scene that James and Erica had because we do need to have that, those conversations more. Um, and I, I appreciate what we have found in our growth as women and as parents, you know, we are allowing our children to have more of a voice and to listen to our children, you know, and have those conversations. Like we're not expect, we didn't expect our parents to be perfect. We know we're not perfect, you know, and I talk to my kids all the time about, hey, I'm not perfect. I'm going to get some things wrong sometimes. I'm going to be a little bit frustrated. I'm going to be a little bit irritated. I might raise my voice, but I will come back and have a conversation with you after the fact, you know, and I think that's so important that we do that. And I remember being a child and my mom didn't care about my feelings. I would be like, well, I feel this way. And you heard my, I, I don't care. You can go talk to God about that. I said what I said, you know, and it just broke my little heart, you know, and I was just like, um, I had nobody to talk to. You know, you can't go talking to the W people. You can't go talking, telling business at church, you know, like, you know, because you know, they coming to get the kids. <laughs> 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 You know, so you grow up without this voice, you know, and so I've done a lot of work, you know, in finding my voice and then making sure I don't crush my children in the same way where they don't feel like they have a voice, you know, because if James could have just taken a, a few minutes to sit back and remember how he felt when he was a kid. He knew something was wrong. How many times did he visit Erica? He knew that that house wasn't right. He knew that woman was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So for him to be having this reflective moment, oh, like, oh, I, 
oh, uh, 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 and like, nigga, you knew, excuse me. Um, but sir, you knew, <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit frustrating when, when you talk, you hear other parents, um, and even talk to your own parents and then they, they take it as a cop out. Oh, I didn't know you thought that way. You didn't listen, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and then, and then they want to sit back and feel bad and stuff. And it's just like, no, it's not a time to feel bad. Just be accountable, you know, say you're sorry, You know, it's okay that you didn't know what you didn't know. It's okay that you were so caught up in your life that you didn't take a moment to sit down and be like, how does my baby feel right now? You know, how are they feeling? You know what I'm saying? So it's okay to say, I'm sorry. It's okay to say I was wrong, you know, and that will bring your family together closer instead of you just saying, oh, that never happened. Oh, whatever. You didn't feel that way. Oh, that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So have those conversations. It's it's okay. It's going to bring about so much growth and it's going to, create space for so much more love to come in once you dig out those ugly roots, you know, of our past, you know, so just wanted to add that. (laughs) No. And that was um, amazing. Uh, I was showing a clip last night. They were talking about um, the movie Denzel Washington was in it. I think it was called like fences or something like that. And there was a part where the son grew up and he says to his dad, you know, I I grew up and I felt like you didn't like me. And his dad said something that my dad always said, there's no law that says I have to like you. He was looking for that moment with his dad to just be like, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you felt that way or, you know, maybe, maybe I didn't show my love for you in a way that other fathers should, or, you know, or, you know, whatever, but I've never not loved you. And I'm sorry that you felt that way. And for him to tell, to tell him, um, there's no law that says I have to like you. There's no law that says I have to love you. I heard that all the time, girl. I don't have to like you. You know, by law, I take care of you. And if I want to terminate that, I can terminate that. You know. <sighs> See, this is the joys of having animals. So somebody decided, you know what? You're recycling? <laughs> that looks real good right now. I'm about to get into it. Uh- Um, but yeah, I grew up all the time being, you know, being told I don't, I don't have to like you. You know, um, my dad would always say to me when I was younger, "There's two things you have to do: stay black and die." And that's just, and I was just like, okay, like that's that's all, you know. And he's like, you don't have to do nothing else in life, but you're gonna stay black and you're gonna die. You know, and I get it. You know, he was born in 1939. It was a different uh, time, but this level of sensitivity that you know a lot of our parents they just they didn't possess that. You know, they, you know, you going through, okay, I went through something too. What? So, so what? So what? Um, you know, just because you went through it doesn't mean that it was right. Just because you went through it doesn't, I mean, and I get it. Like I tell my kids, you know, everywhere you go, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be always going to be somebody who doesn't like you. There's always going to be somebody who's going to question you. Right. So these are things that we're going to have to learn. How do I handle, how do I handle that? I don't care if everybody on the planet likes me. I probably don't like you either. I mean, if I'm just telling the absolute God's honest truth, you're probably not a person that I would ever associate myself with. So why am I worried about if you like me? That's dumb. So I'm always explaining to them, it's not it's not about if they like you or if they understand you. It's about, you know, do you like yourself? Do you understand your reasons for why you do what you do? Do you do the things that you do to hurt other people? Or are you doing those things to protect others or even protect yourself? So when you know who you are and when you know the intentions of why you are who you are, you don't, you, you, you spend less time trying to make sure that it's okay with other people. And I would see even say as women, people really want to put us in this little small box, but baby, that box was built for you to be into it. Cause you're that small, you know, you're that big. We're, we're not staying in nobody else's box. And even growing up in religious families, you know, it was almost demonic for you to question people's actions or, de- or you know, or, or intentions. Of course, so, so I mean, Alicia stayed in trouble and Kyrie too, you know, go to your room. But that's, that's the mark of a true leader. That's the mark of, of true intelligence. You don't just take what people say to you as the gospel. You need to do some research for yourself. Are your words and your actions lining up? If your words and your actions are not lining up as a mother or father, then you know, that's a problem. So yeah, just like you were saying, Alicia. And I think that even for Jalen, just going back for that moment, I think he felt like he was a little bit um, harder, like you were harder on him. Not because you were, because I thought you were actually kind of soft on Jalen. I'm like, you need to boss up a little bit on that little boy. Like he'd be doing some stuff and I'm like, pull that hair out. I, but I think it was the, it, it was the grandma component. 
you know grandma for whatever reason with Jalen was just super over it was almost like she thought that Jalen was like her fifth child so every time that you said something you were automatically questioned and I feel like even if your mom questions certain things you shouldn't question you should never question you know um, a parent you know in front of the child because now you're showing kids are very smart they know how to manipulate so if a kid sees a mother or a father or whether it's the father or the mother you know poking at each other and like um, manipulating or or dismissing what they're saying then they know i can flip that person i don't have to respect you mom doesn't respect you i don't have to respect you grandma don't respect you so i feel like that was some of the problem that you were just like if you just get out of my way let me be a mom to my son we can figure these things out but it, it really made it worse by her coming in and doing some of the things that she did she was trying but it, it wasn't working if he's on restriction and you get mad you don't need to be on restriction because he got a bad grade on that test or, or you know because because he's not doing well and you go and pick up the kid and take them for the weekend and then you know you you, you know okay so you get to have mcdonald's and ice cream and you get to go play with your friends you're supposed to be on restriction and grandma then came and took the child girl you know that's a mess pick him up from school so there were especially there was a few times uh well, well actually when i first had him i was still living with my mom um and so it would almost is like um where she was mama and i was big sister because everything i tried to do it was corrected i mean even from the way i bathed them to the way i dressed them so there was always that little tie up um and so yeah kids are smart they definitely figure it out he knew if he got in trouble you know nana was coming nana was coming to the rescue, even when he got a little bit older, he'd get mad and, you know, go over to grandma's house because when he was really, really little, he would get in trouble and grandma could pick him up from daycare. Um, grandma would pick him up from school early. Um, and so, you know, I mean, it, it, we worked it out later, but, you know, there there was definitely a lot of air interference that happened. Girl, what what is it about grandparents and the leniency that they see with grandkids that the, that they didn't give us when we were kids? I'm like, oh, tell her that. Ma no, ma'am, like, you hush, you hush, because you didn't do that for me when I was a kid. I would have been knocked all around this living room. <laughs> right. I'm like, grandma didn't do this with you. Right. She could. She should have. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. There. So there was a lot of interference. So Karina was right about that. And the and, and for me, and the reason why I brought that up was because I'm not gonna have you in here questioning yourself. I'm not gonna have you in here beating up yourself like, well, maybe I was hard on him. No, you wasn't, because I was there. I remember. Okay. I've been in your life your whole life. So when on those days where you feel like, well, maybe, no, no, no. Cause I remember the story. I was on the phone when you got busted in the head with a, a sippy cup. Okay. I, I remember, you know, <laughs> you know, you be yourself being thrown at you and him screaming. No. And I'm not saying that these aren't things that kids do, but it's definitely something that you have to nip in the butt early on. Cause if not, you'll look up and you'll have a six year old punching you in your nose and thinking that it's okay to do so. And when does that stop? Cause I'll be damned. If I got a hide from a 12 year old boy who got an attitude. Oh, you have an attitude? Oh, I have a bigger one than you. And I know how to break bones. So let's do what we have to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about getting things under control early on. And it's not just with kids. It's just in life in general. When you allow disrespect, disrespect grows like wildfire. So if I see a hair of something, I'm done. Dismissed. You're dismissed. Like the military. Dismissed. Get the hell up out of my face. Dismiss. If I see a hairline of any form, I think like disrespect or craziness or something that's off, you're done. I don't see you no more. Anyway, that's just that. So like I said, I'm not going to sit here and allow you to beat yourself up because I remember the story. Mm -hmm. As my mom used to say, uh, oh, you want to act crazy? Oh, I'll show you crazy. Girl, that used to scare the mess out of me. I'm like, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> I just went to my room. <laughs>